Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear friends, uh, I displayed an ECG with a small video uh, uh, with some questions and uh, asked you people to answer. And uh, I'm very happy that a lot of you answered this question which I asked with this ECG. So just for sake of reminder, I'm just displaying this ECG on the screen and now I'll show you the scenario uh, on which I have asked you the question. This was the scenario. 67 years, diabetic female, inferior STEMI two weeks back, went through primary PCI to RCA, discharge uncomplicated, post MI EF 55% with sinus rhythm. And that's very important that at the time of discharge, this patient had sinus rhythm. And that's the way uh, examiner give you a hint towards the status of the patient. And this was an acute ACS STEMI patient. And he was discharged on aspirin, ticagrelor, bezoprolol, remipril, rizubastatin, 12 hours, unusual heartbeat palpitation for 12 hours. These are the complaints with me, which he presented again. And I asked you these questions, right ECG finding, short and long-term management strategy. And this again, I'm, in, I'm uh, giving you a hint towards that ECG. You all answered ECG finding very well. It was in some leads looking to be a clutter or maybe fibrillation. But since the management of both of them in terms of short term and long term are similar, so we're not going into this debate whether it's clutter or fibrillation. It's an irregular rhythm with, without P, single P wave, maybe multiple or maybe uh, fibrillatory waves. Evidence of cold and fear wall MI was there, but the important question was short and long term management. Since here the history was 12 hours, so it's a short lived atrial fibrillation which can be converted to sinus rhythm chemically or electrically. But here apparently there's no, not an urgent need to convert it into sinus rhythm. Because second important thing you have to look for in a patient is his, his risk for thromboembolism, which is Chad Basque. And nobody addressed that element. And here this patient's Chad Basque is, she's diabetic, she's more than 65, she had an inferior MI, so Chad Basque 30 more than 3 or 4. So he needs long-term anticoagulation. Now, long-term anticoagulation with dual antiplatelet on board. It's a difficult task. How to plan this long-term anticoagulation in a patient who's recently st stented about two weeks back? So that was the key question which nobody addressed in his answer. So today I'm going to give you those. And these are all latest guideline base. This fact. This is just giving you a hint towards a short-lived AF can be anticoagulated. Just start the anticoagulation in a high risk for thromboembolic and you can cardioversion. Cardioversion, urgent direct cardioversion is needed if there is an ongoing ischemia or inadequate or hemodynamic compromise. And in this patient, it wasn't a case <clears throat> like that. So we usually don't really embark on rhythm control if rate is not that high, we usually increment the dose of uh, uh, rate limiting agents. And since this patient needs, whether you convert in sinus rhythm or keep her in AF, she needs anticoagulation. You can try uh, converting to sinus rhythm with chemically, uh, but I would prefer keeping him on uh, uh, rate limiting agent. <clears throat> This was the very key question you have to answer. If triple therapy, oral anticoagulant, aspirin, P2, Y12 inhibitor is prescribed because here in this patient, it's just two weeks back he had received drug looting stents. So you have to put, him, put her on triple agent. So when you are keeping someone on triple agent, the newer guidelines suggest that to choose clopidogrel in preference of presogrel. So that's important. You have to shift her from ticagrelor to clopidogrel, and you can start either rivaroxaban as it's there in debigatron. And second important thing that you can reduce the dose of, if you have a high bleeding risk patient, 
from 20 to 15 milligram of river graxilvan K. And uh, vitamin K, if you're using, you should be very careful in keeping the INR 2 to 2.5 and aspirin in low dosages. So these two points are very important. Now the important is when to switch from triple therapy to double therapy. And, and in double therapy, what you can use, because now there are a number of studies where you can keep your patient on double therapy in a way that I have B2 vital and bitter and anticoagulation. You can skip aspirin. And for that, the recommendations nowadays is that if triple therapy, oral anticoagulant, aspirin, and P2 alternative is prescribed for patient with AF, and if you are prescribing all three, you have to prescribe topidogrel as your P2 vital patient. Risk of high who have undergone BCI when setting, transition to double therapy from triple therapy at four to six, six weeks may be considered. That's the important point, that after four to six weeks, you can shift from triple to double therapy. I hope this is just an introduction of my Facebook page and YouTube channel. Thank you very much for the listening, for listening all of it. And I think uh, uh, this way of, <clears throat> although still I <clears throat> thought you people may interact in great numbers, but haven't found that much of comments. I hope this will help you in managing your patients of such kind. Thank you very much for.